Clash Royale. I think it's got to be TY. I don't think you want to PvP again. Oh, but I'm wrong. Stat is going to put Classic into his third Protoss versus Protoss here tonight. And this may come back to bite the Rolster fans here because this is very risky. Clearly, Classic came prepared. His game last game was incredible. Uh, and he outplayed Zest big time. This map is very different. And I have to wonder if. If really Stats was prepared for Classic on this map, I mean, I doubt it. I don't think they thought he would make it this far if he came out at all. So he has to kind of do something on the fly here. And Classic seems really good in the Protoss versus Protoss today. So I'm a little bit scared right now for KT Rolster. Well, Stats is pretty good at this map. We've seen him come out on this map many times. He defeated SOS on this map. Uh, not an easy feat to do, of course. So I, I think it's going to be a very even PvP here between these two players. All right, guys, we are going to jump into this map right away. Let's see if we if Stats can tie it up or if this player, Classic, will win his third for us for the Protoss and put SKT on match point. It's time. Let's jump into New Gettysburg. Down here in the bottom right, the third Protoss for this team, it is Stats. 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 <laughs> Down here in the bottom left in the orange, two kills already. It is classic. He's looking for the triple kill. Will yet again be denying vision, it looks like, with that pylon placement. Very intelligent move. And yet again, our names are going to be opposite position-wise of the players, so please forgive me if I say the wrong name once or twice. Um, this is actually done due to the fact that these teams have official colors. They're used about 95% of the time. Sometimes they're not used, but we don't know why. They've been consistent for the playoffs, I suppose. Yeah. Got a couple of fans coming down. Not sure. Oh, it's their first time coming. Yeah. And something about his girlfriend. They were together. I don't know. It was, like, it was at a weird angle. I think a Korean would have had trouble reading that, so no worries. Um, he also wrote over like the SK part there at the back. Yeah, that's the rough part. Yep. Anyways, obviously two gates for both players. They're not going to break the rules of this matchup. No, uh, no super in the booth, so we're not seeing any crazy fast nexus or anything like that. But this map has a really short rush distance for Adepts. And you can block the Adepts with Stalkers on the bridge. So that's something that we could potentially see here. Let's wait and see what these guys have planned. I think it's probably going to be Adepts for both players. But the Stalker potential for Harass is there because this bridge is so narrow. You have to really shade correctly. If you just rush out your first shade to try to get the Adepts there first, you could mm -hmm. get caught on the bridge, what well, we've seen before. So Nunchuk versus... Um Stats, yeah, it was, it was stats on this map actually for game number one yesterday. And Myungshik, uh, he put a pylon, or maybe that was stats that had a pylon out there. And they both went adepts, and someone was baited by the pylon and tried to kill it. And the other guy just sent his mothership core and the two adepts into the main and got 10 pro kills. Yep. It was insane. And uh, yeah, stats got that lead, and Myungshik was really far behind, and then Myungshik won the game. Because I remember stats saying he was really disappointed by. Losing to that kind of comeback win from yeah. Magic. So, by the way, really interesting here. We had a Zealot made uh, and then canceled, and he only went one Stalker to get a faster Nexus. So it's really greedy build here again from Classic. And I'm, I'm liking how he's he's basically saying I'm so good I'm going to take every risk. And when your team is up two one and you have two kills in a row and you're playing a mirror matchup like this, I say take the risk because you're. If you lose, it's tough, but you still have the momentum lead, and I think that's really important. Okay, here comes the Shades here. The Stalker is busy in the main base, but there is that wall, and the Adepts do get denied. Let's see what kind of damage he can get done here, or is scouting as well. The second Stalker is seen, and he has to back off, so he did scout with the Adepts at the front basically everything that's here, so he knows what's going on. No tech has been made just yet. Ooh! Oh, four health left. So close there. 
You know, I really like this kind of build for Classic because, okay, you killed a Pylon, I have a Nexus, you know? It's like, I don't even want to overcharge that. I'm not interested. Uh, even if the Mothership Core was back earlier, he's like, no, it's fine. The I still have a Nexus. They need to lie on their back and shoot up, man, because that Mothership Core is so, so low. I wish there was some way to do that. Make your adept stationary for like three minutes as they slowly sit down and lean on their backs and then shoot up. Hey man, I got David Kill on my speed dial. I'll call him. <laughs> you got a new, you got a new balance idea here. It's good. Um, we, as, you know, because we need more units in StarCraft too that switch Ooh. modes. Four kills, pretty solid, and he has his own Nexus finishing up now. And this Nexus didn't get much value yet, so this actually works out pretty well. He also scouted that Robo. It looks like. Can yep. you confirm? Yeah, yeah he did. So that's really important. And look at this. This is a sign of an experienced player. Um, no StarCraft fans. It's not for a late cannon rush. This is, <laughs> I want to have an upgrade lead all game long because I know that this game is going three base, four base. I can sense it. And I'm going to take this greedier forge because I want to get ahead early. It's, it's this game sense of, I know what we're going to do later on in this game. And I want to be one upgrade ahead of you. I'm thinking about not the game in two minutes, in three minutes. I'm thinking about the game in five minutes and six minutes later from now. Chronoing that upgrade as well. So I yeah. like this play a lot. It's really cool. All it does is delay your Twilight Council, but he's still ahead of Classic. You know, the thing that he's behind on was the Nexus, but it's not going to matter, as you said, once we get you know, three, four minutes in, maybe he takes a quicker third base because he knows that Classic is not going to have a timing. I'm very curious to see, you know, who takes the first third base, who is going to be like, oh, no, I, I've realized this, you know, but I have to be a little bit careful. When, when is that timing going to come where they feel comfortable enough to take it, but greedy enough to take it before, it before the other player? And are the other, you know, are the opponents going to be scouting this? We do have a Warp Prism coming out here from yeah. Stats, or rather Classic, so maybe he wants to get a bit aggressive. And with a quick glaze, I feel like he's definitely not going to be taking a third base right now. Look at this scout, by the way. It's coming around the top of the map. He's looking for two things specifically. Look at this. This is so smart. This is so important. First thing he's looking for is a hidden Templar Archives. That's why he took the long path. He's looking for a hidden Templar Archives because he knows Classic likes to hide that, likes to go storm drops. He swings around, sees a third base. Also, he recontrols the Watchtower. And he knows that if a drop comes through, it's not going to come through the bottom because that's too obvious. Um, he misses the middle with that scout, but I think he's really, really looking for that Temple Archives, which is coming up, by the way. And the drop is coming through the middle. He does not have vision of this. It's the one thing he did slightly miss with that Hallucination Scout. This just does have four adepts. It's going to be good to pressure third base that's coming up or even to drop into the back of the natural and, uh, you know, just snipe a bunch of probes and then pick up. We've seen that a lot on this map, actually. He's also going to time it out really well with uh, the Glaives upgrade. It's going to be ready right when this hits, it looks like. Look at oh, that. denied! That is so huge! Classic is on fire right now! And he drops in here, just like I was saying, you know, trying to snipe some of these probes. It didn't look like he got any. Yeah. But either, even so, you know, the idea is there. Hey, I mean, he got the he popped the barrier. That's, that's, a, that's a small win. <laughs> <laughs> And he delayed this third Nexus. As you said, this is the most important thing about this uh, yeah. entire little exchange between these two players. Also, he did not go for Storm. He's just building his Archon count first, which is interesting. Just not comfortable versus Stats to get that uh, Psionic Storm upgrade. As the Glaives do finish here now, more Stats as well. Dead Stalker here, man. Eventually. Perhaps. I think. Shades again. I'm pretty sure that's a Dead Stalker. Spanks it again. Yeah, the Stalker's getting trapped. Oh, he needs some micro to get the second hit. <laughs> oh, man. This is... Okay, the Stalker's gosh, giving up right. on life. <laughs> he actually just gave up. Now will these players going into the middle of the map? He has the plus one advantage, and plus two is shortly going to be ready. Oh, he sees the Observer, too. He's going to snipe it. Am I wrong? No, I thought he saw it. He moved at a weird time. This is not going to go well for stats. This is not a fight he can take. Like you said, the plus one advantage isn't going to matter in the mid game. Look at this tiny, puny army. Hallucinated Archons here as well. He does have the plus one, but not the plus two. Does he have enough? They both have claims. Guardian he does, shields. He does have that one warp in that's going to help him so, so much. And that plus one really doing work here. A very, very close fight between these two players. Actually, it looks like he might have enough. Plus two is 12 seconds away. He does have to back off here. 
This is not a game losing fight for Classic, oh. at least not yet. He needs another warp in. He's probably so close to being ready for it. Look at this, Stats is just on the run. He just wants to save as much as possible, get back to his Mothership Core, and make sure he keeps that Archon that alive. Archon needs to pick it up! He needs to pick that up! It's so important right now! Is he gonna give up the third? He might. He's about to, or he has plus two, you know? He has a two upgrade lead. Maybe he feels like that's enough. Oh, oh the time, the time warp. warp. He has to retreat for now. That's such an important time warp here. He's buying so much time, and he has another warp in here. Plus two right now to plus zero. No upgrades for Classic. Nice it's snipe be on that Archon. Though. He doesn't have any pylons here to overcharge. They're on the right side, doing a little bit of zoning, not a lot. Good micro here. He needs another warp, and if he can get it, this is just too many units for Classic, even though he has the upgrade advantage. But here's another warp in for both players. This is such a close fight right now, but it looks like maybe Classic has enough. There's two Immortals in the back here, though, for Stats are really doing a huge amount of damage, and that's going to turn the tides just barely. Just barely. He's gonna, he's gonna live and win the fight. It looks like he will win the fight and win the game. He, he kept the Nexus alive. He doesn't have a lot of probes over there right now, but he has that plus two advantage and he has a larger army massively right now. Looks like he's not gonna counter attack yet. This Warp Prism being alive is so huge for Classic because he can actually continue to threaten with this. And that means that Stats can't counter attack and kill him until that is dead. And it's gonna be a tall order to kill it with one Stalker here for anti-air. It is starting to get a little bit lower. He's trying to use this very aggressively to get any probes he can, actually losing an Adept there. It's like one Adept for one probe, and now just trying to overcharge, do whatever defense he can. Maybe he's going to get to the main here. Oh, okay, there's a Warpin of Adepts to push this back. It's funny because he doesn't... It's like he's trying to force Stalkers to be Warpin because they're just not as good as Adepts in the fight. <laughs> but Stats is just not going to Warpin any Stalkers. He's like, no, I'll just let the prison I won't live. do it. He's now getting the plus one armor. Uh, and there's not a forge on the map, as far as I know, for Classic. I don't think he's even made one. He's just totally neglected. Nope. Uh, no forge. He's, he's just letting that part of uh, uh, things go. And soon it is going to matter. You know, you could see just barely how that plus two like kept him alive with the two Immortals doing a lot of damage in the back, very well protected. But once it gets to 2-1, and then like 2-2 two, two, perhaps, it's going to make a huge difference because you're four upgrades ahead of your opponent. Yeah. Also, Classic kind of, he kept making probes. He's way up in worker count right now. He had better mining at this third base, so he had a better economy. So I think Stats feels like he needs to use this upgrade advantage now. Eight seconds to go on that armor. Yeah, look at this. I mean, look at the army supplies right now. Extremely, extremely close. Okay. That War Prism also is very, very key. Cannot afford to lose that here. This is so, so risky. I don't think he's obviously not going to no. commit now, but... Oh, oh my he God. does it! He does commit, and he's in a better position here, too. He could snipe the Cyber Core, but actually wouldn't stop Adept Warpins. That's huge. If he gets that core, he can actually shoot it. Looks like he's not going to go for it. He's unpowered several gateways. He has a concave. He jumps out. He doesn't get the core, though. This is so crazy, the game we're watching right now. Oh, that Archon Micro, he got a huge hit on those Adepts. So sick. Oh, here comes the fight, though. Let's see, does he have enough? He has the upgrade lead. I think he will win this. Another warp in here, and I think that's going to be enough. He's fighting away from those pylons. Stats. A great maneuver by Stats. Stats was such a sick play here. The upgrade lead, he knew he had it. He forced that awkward fight with the Shade. Will he do it again? I think he will. Nope, he's not going oh. to. But he forces the units back, and now he controls the third base. And that is a dead Nexus and perhaps a dead Classic here. There's no way he can defend it at this point. That's going to be it. Stats is actually going to take him down on yeah. this map. Down goes the Nexus. Stats is going to tie this series up 2-2. Two, two. And, I mean, now he doesn't even have to commit. He's like, now I'm three upgrades ahead of you. And what are you going to do? <laughs> Okay, he's gonna he's gonna show the shade. Does not commit. I really don't feel like he has to, um, but he's so ahead that he can almost yeah, do whatever he wants. He's playing it very safe, you know. Wants to wait. There is no more energy on that mothership core, so. Nice. Oh, nice oh. snipe on the Archon. Okay. Good target there by Classic. He's got a nice split here. Oh, this is so funny. Here we go. He's gonna start the fight. There's the shade and onto the Archons. No target though. The Archons get massive value now. He targets. Yeah, this is just too many units here, too many upgrades, and that should be it here. Stats ties a sigh of relief. GG, KT Rolster bringing us to a 2-2. What a close series and what a close game that was. Stats was on the ropes there for quite a while. He just barely holds on. You know, that very questionable move to move out on the map right before plus two finishes. It looks like he wanted to go for an attack with plus two.
But Classic actually met him in the middle of the map, which is very smart. I'm not sure if he got a scout on the upgrades that were coming, and he was like, okay, I can I can try to have fight here where I have more units and he only has plus one and not plus two. And that's why it went hugely in Classic's favor. It's just that when he got back home stats did, the time warp, the overcharges, and the plus two hits, and he buys himself just barely enough time to take that fight. And then from there, it was all classic, or rather, stats this game. So yeah. Remember when very, I said when he made that forge, I'm like, he's not thinking about two minutes, three minutes from now. He's thinking about four minutes, five minutes from now. Where he's gonna be taking these fights for better upgrades, and that's really the one of the game. The time buying techniques he used uh, to get that upgrade lead as well, and fighting with less probes, understanding his situation, also knowing. Now, we didn't really talk about this, but I think it's really important. Knowing that he would never catch up in probes, he wanted to attack. He didn't even make probes. He was like, no. Yeah. Every 50 minerals I could spend on a probe is actually like one third of an adept base of <laughs> resources. I don't want to spend on that. I want all the adepts. I have the upgrade advantage. Three upgrades ahead. And there you have it. We do have a tie series. Two to two. And this forces SKT to use one of their two remaining players. I think this is the time you want to use Myung Shake, though. I think this is where you yeah. send him out to snipe. Dark has to clean up house afterwards. But Myung Shake, this is his time. It is his time. I mean, he took out stats in game number one yesterday. It's going to be a different map, King Sejong Station. It doesn't really matter. Myung Shake is such a tricky player. He's so hard to just lock down in PvP. You never know what he's going to do. And it's not even like he's bringing out crazy stuff like hidden bases or anything like that. It's just really, really small touches uh, up, touches up on his play. It's, it's really, really fantastic to watch. And I hope he does get to come out here and face stats in the PvP. That's what I want to see, Wolf. Yeah, that's what I want to see too, man. Uh, looks like we're going to take...